measuring device that we use to measure the mass is called a scale. Different scales, they have different accuracy. That means they would show different number of decimal places. Like the one showing on the picture, it shows three decimal uh, places. To measure the mass, you want to protect the scale. So to protect the scale, you want to make sure to place the weighing paper first. If you don't want to count the weighing paper, the mass of the weighing paper, you would need to tear the mass of the weighing paper. The scale has a tear button, which you would use to tear the scale. That does not count the mass of the weighing paper. Now, to measure the mass directly, simply place the object on the weighing paper and read the mass with all decimal places provided. Now, if you need to pause the video at any time to record the, the exact number, you would just record pause and record the number. The first object you are measuring is mass of penny. Please record the mass for the data sheet. And the second object you are measuring is the mass of 150 milliliter beaker. Then you measure the mass of a nickel, record the number. Now you have mass of empty 100 milliliter graduate cylinder. And then mass of the watch glass. What is the scale that I'm using for watch glass? It only shows one decimal place. So you record the number with one decimal place only. Not all the scales here, they show the same number of decimal places. They have different accuracy. In this part of the experiment, we want to measure exactly 2.750 grams of the sodium chloride. So I place the vein paper on the balance, on the scale. Uh, press the tear button because I don't want to include the mass of the weighing paper. And using a container for sodium chloride, I would add enough sodium chloride until the number is 2.750. When I get close to that number, I try to add slowly. So I don't have to take it out. So just add one grain at a time. I'm trying to get to 750. Okay, right there. 2.750. Five point zero zero grams of calcium chloride. So I'm going to place a new weighing paper. Press the tear button, and this time I'm adding the calcium chloride. Since I only need five grams. I'm going to add one spatula at a time to get close to five grams. And then I would add slowly to adjust the mass. And I added more than enough. If I added more than enough, I don't want to return to the original container. I would have a waste container and I would drop into waste container. Add slowly to reach the 5.00 and I will stop there. Okay, 
Okay, next step, we want to measure 22 grams of water. For water, I need to have a beaker or, um, or graduate cylinder um, to hold the water. So I'm going to place a beaker on the scale, uh, press the tear button again to make sure that it's zero. Then I would add water slowly until it reaches um, 22. I want to get close to 22 and then use a dropper to adjust the, um, the mass. I usually get that close to um, 20. And if it's extra, I would remove. If it's not enough, I would add more. So Next, we will measure the mass of 50 milliliters of water in a graduate cylinder, including the mass of the cylinder. Now, we have one teaspoon of salt. We add the second teaspoon of salt. So there's a total of two teaspoons of salt. And we are adding the third teaspoon of the salt to what we had before, and we have the collective of three teaspoons of salt. Next measurement, we are measuring one spoon of calcium chloride, and anhydrous calcium chloride. Anhydrous calcium chloride is going to absorb water and gain weight over the time. So what we do, we measure the mass of the calcium chloride and wait for 15 minutes. We measure the mass again, and we can see the difference, how much water was absorbed from the, uh, from the environment, from the moisture, from the air.